What's happening everybody? My name is Tom. I'm Palmer Clay Artist here on YouTube. I make sculpting videos as often as I can and I show you how I do whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, in this video I got for you a cool, a cool little project. I made a snake. It is actually a coral snake, second deadliest snake in the world. So it's pretty cool to watch but even if you're not into sculpting it's still kind of entertaining. People seem to enjoy the videos anyways. Um, it's a bit lengthy, but you never know what kind of tips or tricks you might find in a video, so it's always worth watching the whole thing. You know, I would have never considered making a snake using polymer clay because of just the nature of the clay. It's it's a rigid form once you make it, and it's it can shatter or break. But cos clay kind of changes all of that, and it's really opening up more options for us as far as what we can make, and I find that awesome. It really is. I mean, look what this can do. It's amazing. I'd really appreciate it if you guys like this video and drop me a comment. I'm always interested in hearing what you guys have to say or just say hello. But without further ado, let's get started. I want to mention one more thing about the cosplay. It's not yet available to the public right now. Like I mentioned, I'm beta testing this. But they have a Kickstarter program going right now where you can go and pledge a certain amount of money and you'll receive a package of whatever pledge you sign up for. That doesn't get shipped until somewhere around February, possibly a little sooner, hopefully, but uh, the longest will be around February. I already made a pledge, two of them actually. You need a, uh, multiple accounts to make more than one pledge. I got the $100 sculpting package where half of it's gray and half of it's beige, eight pounds total. And I got the $50 decorative pack where you get half a pound of each of the colors. That should be here somewhere around February. So I, I would recommend you, uh, if you're interested in the clay, to back the Kickstarter. It's gonna be the soonest possible that you can achieve getting this clay. But I just wanted to point that out there real quick. Okay, these are some of the things I'm gonna be using to make my very own bendy snake or posable snake. I got some sculpting tools. I got a tissue slicer, a hobby knife, or exacto knife, some cos clay, and some galvanized wire. I would use copper wire if I had some thicker copper wire. The trade-off between galvanized and copper, as far as posability goes, copper seems to bend into the shape you want and then stay there. Whereas galvanized has like a spring back, it springs back. So it's hard to achieve the exact pose you're looking for. Uh, it becomes particularly challenging when you're actually doing stop motion animation with it. Because if you're trying to just bend in small increments, it's you just gotta guess with it. Whereas copper bends to the shape that you're bending it to, and there is no recoil or hardly any. Whereas this has a lot of recoil to it. So I'm gonna be using this though, because it's really all I have right now. This is, I do believe, 14 gauge galvanized. I got a hundred foot of it from Walmart for like seven bucks or twelve bucks or whatever. I've had it for years. <laughs> It lasts forever. Uh, but this is the stuff I'm going to be using in this project. I want to show you real quick how to prepare this for conditioning. I'm going to be using a pasta machine, but before you don't just run this whole block through there. It'll crumble and be a mess. What you want to do is just take a tissue slicer like this and cut relatively thin slices like this. That way, when you put it through the pasta machine, it'll compress it, but only a little bit. It won't cause it to you know come apart. Because if you look, the clay separates because it's not conditioned and it and it seems I don't know like it would be crumbly but it's really not because once it's conditioned it's fine see I can just do a little piece right here and show you that it conditions rather quickly and it doesn't do that like if I go to bend it now it, it just stretches it doesn't rip anymore that's how you know when you're completely conditioned but what you want to do is just take your tissue slicer and cut several pieces like this and then run it through the pasta machine. If you don't have a pasta machine, first of all, I recommend you getting one. Using polymer clay, it's almost a must having a pop pasta machine. I mean, there's ways around it. You can use a jar to do some of this or you can just... You could just take your hand and break up small pieces of it and condition it thoroughly, but it takes your workload, it, it, it makes it longer, 
it's longer and, and more difficult to do. Using the posture machine is heaven sent when it comes to you know messing with polymer clay. So I'm just going to stick this through like this. It'll compress it to that thickness, which is the, the thickest setting. And it does this weird thing on the ends, where it, on the sides where it kind of splits. Don't worry about that. So I'm going to run a couple through here. Then take these couple and join them together. And then run those through. See how the, the sides of them are all broke up? That's because the clay is kind of crumbly and the way it compresses it, it just does that. Just fold it again and after you run it through a couple times, you can stick it in there um, horizontally like this. Fold it. Always put the fold facing down. That way we don't create air pockets. See how this edge looks really nice now, but this is still messed up? You can fold it again, but stop short to where it doesn't overlap, like go further than the other side. And this side will be compressed into the back side. See, watch what happens. Fold facing down. Now that rough, it's rough right in here, but this is all, the edge is gone, so to speak. So you keep doing that. You just keep folding it. Always go a little short like that. It takes that rough stuff and, and pushes it into the background. And see how this end, this side is, there's no roughness to it, but this side has that weird pattern from the two you know, halves being pushed together. I always fold away from this where this is on the outside. So I would fold this like that. So that inside is smooth and pretty much roughness free. Now the outside has that weird pattern. I always do it like that because I think that keeps the, the air pockets down real low. You don't want air pockets in the clay. But if you get air pockets in your clay, don't worry. The, you just run it through after you get it all nice and conditioned. The more you run it through, the longer they'll be drawn out and your air pockets will just disappear. But you want to run your clay through several times. See how nice this looks now? The edges aren't all destroyed and crazy looking. And it's actually really good looking right now. There's no air pockets. It doesn't look like anyways. And watch what happens. See how that does right there that's some nice conditioned clay this is what we're looking for and this is what you do to all your clay before you get started okay I got me my clay all conditioned it's got some high tack this cause clay has high tack to it but I got this sheet of clay rolled out instead of just crinkling this all up into a ball because I want to get this into a ball so I can roll out a snake a better way to do this to reduce the amount of air pockets is just to take a little polymer clay roller or even a jar of some sort whatever you have but you will mimic what you do in the posh machine start here at that fold and roll it this way that'll take the air out of that the where you just joined it pull it up and then fold it again and roll it again with the clay roller, you know, edge to edge, and then not this way because it's got that weird thing. See how this is cleaner? Fold it this way now. This will kind of give you a little head start on bunching it up into a ball of clay as opposed to just, you know, doing it that way. And then you just push it this way. This is probably the cleanest way to get you a ball of clay go, you know, a ball going without having too much air pockets going on in there. It's just something that I do. Does it have to be done? No. I just thought I would share it with you though because, I don't know, it might be cool to somebody. But now I'm going to roll out a ball of clay 
I'm gonna roll it real. It's really nice. No, none of this right here. These lines or, or anything like that. None of that going on. So just keep doing this until it's good. It doesn't need to be a perfect ball. And this is about a little over a quarter pound. I'd say maybe three eighths of a pound of clay. So we're gonna just see what this makes us. I don't wanna to use too much of the clay. But now I'm gonna roll this out into, ironically, a snake. A snake is a common term used for clay artists. It's a shape, it's a common shape. It's a building block or a component that you can use to build almost anything. I use snakes all the time as well as uh, sheets of clay. And I tell you right now, this is actually quite a bit of clay. I didn't think it was gonna give me that much. For now, we're rolling it out like we would normally do a snake, which is evenly. We wanna make it even. It won't be even when we're done, but we wanna start with it being even. Okay, we got a quite a good snake rolled out here. Now, we need to taper the end where his tail's gonna be. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna roll like this and just pull on it and roll to the end. Do you see how nice that just tapered? I don't think this clay that I got right here is gonna be too different than the final version. I don't know how much different it is. It, it's a test, it's a test batch, I do know that. But I can't wait to get the finished, the finished version of the clays. I'm trying to make it to where it doesn't look like it's too fat. Because the uh, coral snake is actually, they're quite skinny. They're not very big snakes at all. And the way it's looking, it looks like I can make me a life-size snake with the amount of clay that I chose to use here. We got this end done. Looks pretty good. Uh, now I got to do something with this end. I'm just continuing to roll it out, but I'm not trying to rush this. I'm going to try to shape the head of it real quick. For this, I'm just pinching like this, that fresh cut, pinching the edges and bringing it on in. And you notice that's kind of making like a little bowl right there. Just keep going until it closes up, but be careful not to make an air pocket. There, that looks pretty good. Now we got we got to make the neck area a little thinner where it, where its neck is. It should be tapered right here too. But there's something I wanted to do really quick. I got this hobby knife. What I was wanting to do is try to cut a flat surface on this. Notice there is no up and down on the snake right now. It's completely round. And I want it to where it has like a flat bottom. So I'm gonna attempt taking this hobby knife and just cutting in just a little bit, but being steady with my hand all the way down and cut a little bit of this clay off. Because I'm holding this steady using the table. And that just twisted on me. That's okay. We'll get around that. So let's see what that looks like. It should lay now flat. I'm just twisting it right here where that cut was to where they line up again. It's a pretty easy fix. I just kind of spun it a little bit and I'll cut it again right there. There, now it rests, it has a bottom. Hear that? And the next step before we do some shaping, let me do this neck area. I'm just pushing down in the neck area you can make a section of, of a snake larger by drawing it back in like this. This will help make this head larger as well. But I want the head to be a little bit bigger. This is kind of a fat snake. All right, I'm liking that. This is the basic shapes of the snake what we're going for right here. Now I'm gonna straighten this out as straight as I can get it and take some of my galvanized wire Always use safety protection when working with galvanized wire. Now I want to counter bend this. I want, to, I want to try to get this wire as straight as possible to match this. All right, we're gonna go with this right here. It's pretty straight. So we're gonna straighten this back out. I'm gonna take my hobby knife 
and we're going to dissect this snake. Just like we're in science class, I'm gonna start up here, I'd say a couple inches from the end of the head, and we're gonna cut down into it fairly deep, but not all the way through. And remember, it's sitting on that flat bottom. Using an X-Acto knife makes a cut like this fairly easy. Now that we got it cut, we want to open this up. So I'm just going to gently pry at it and work my way down it and open this up, pulling from both sides. At this point, I'm just trying to get this wire in there, trying to just make it possible. Is this even possible? And it looks like it's working. What I did here is I I bent the snake to the, the curve of the wire that I had going on. Like right here, I'll correct it. That took the stress out of what I was doing and allow and it's allowing it to work. Took a little more from the end. It's a little deep right here at the end. So I'm gonna make sure I'm at least halfway because I cut all the way through down there towards the the end of it but I'm nice and deep pretty much the center is what you're uh, what you're trying to um, achieve the center of the snake we want to take our time on this part because it's open and we can see what's going on once it start once we close it up it'll be you know gone we won't know where the wire is so uh, it'll be almost, it'll be very difficult trying to make adjustments to the wire so the point I'm making is take your time at this part where it's open and you can see what's going on you want to try to shoot for the center and I like this I like what I got so now I'm gonna close this back up we just gave this snake a skeleton so to speak See, now we have a wire in there. That wire is going to I hopefully allow us to have some sort of posability for this. I don't know, the wire's not very strong and this clay's pretty thick, so we'll have to see. Okay, I'm going to use a couple drops of Sculpey clay softener on this and try to work this into a better shape. Long even strokes here. And it's working. Now I'm going to free it up from the table and we're going to flip it over upside down. I'm going to cut some basic details into the bottom of this so it doesn't look too boring. I'm just using this flat tool and cutting these little segments. Oops. See, I don't like that one. Let's get rid of it. This way the bottom is done and we don't have to worry about it too much. But I'm going to try to put a little bit of texture on this snake too. We probably could have got away with just not doing any texture and just painting it. But I want to try to, you know, push the push the the envelope so to speak, go outside of my comfort zone. Now these probably would be bigger, I guess. I'm not sure. Some of y'all that actually study snakes are probably cringing right now. <laughs> I feel you. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just, it's the essence of the art project itself, not the, not entirely the accuracy. I'm just trying to get people going on making their own snake here. And if you want to go super crazy detailed and realistic, then just go and do the referencing. Look up some of this stuff. I'm getting closer towards the end here. All right. So the whole bottom has been textured. We just got the belly lines on there. Now we're going to flip him back up, up onto his belly. I'm going to try the idea of stamping the image. So I'm going to take this mechanical pencil. I just took the racer out and dumped the lead out. And I'm going to put one dead center on the back. Make sure the impression is good all the way around like this. Now this should be a little more oval. I wonder if I can modify this. With a little heat perhaps. Let's try this again. We're going to get this going eventually, I swear it. I'm holding it to where the oval part is long ways with the snake. So let's stamp it one good time. 
it's not perfectly round now, which is a lot better. And then the, right next to it, we're going to go offset two of them. And then one, and then two, and then one, two. And then we're just going to work all the way down. I know there's more scales that go on it, but we can turn it and stuff and work on it like that. But for now, we're going to get that. This is like a starter pattern, which is one, two, one, two. This is pretty slow going process, y'all. But I'm sticking to that starter pattern, which is one, two, one, two. Got a little bit of zoom, I zoomed in a little bit for you here. I suppose it would look even better if I had made it oval. Because this looks like an actual shape. It's round, it's a very identifiable shape, and it takes away uh, some of the realism, I think. I think we're going to stop right before the head. Now I'm going to turn this a little bit to where you can see what I got going on but the pattern that I did it left this shallow area right here that's where the next little circle is gonna go so let's start like right here double check the bend of my stamping tool just roll it I'm trying to rotate it to where you can see but normally I would just work with it flat on the table so I just did from here to here and it left, if you notice it left that pattern again, here's the shallow areas right here, which I'll do that again right here. This is giving a, statter, a staggered pattern, which is kind of what we're wanting. And then right here is the flat parts the little lines that I made so we're really close to being all the way over I'm just finishing up those one holes that didn't get the edge so now I just go once again the shallow area is gonna take another little stamp trying not to um, overlap another circle because that will make it look not good and then this last little piece I'll just make a little one with this tool just like that it takes a minute to figure out how how to go about doing it so this is textured all the way around onto this side this area right here so I'll do this for the entire thing all the way on both sides here I'll do this other side too maybe it'll be a better vantage point but you see the shallow areas? I'll, I'll start with those. Give it a little roll so I know it get it imprints down all the way. Roll it a little bit so you can see it. And then it left to follow the same same thing. Be just right here. In areas where I do that, I suppose it won't hurt. This ain't going to be perfect, y'all. I don't know how nice this is going to be. See, I'm overlapping. It's kind of tricky. I don't think I've ever made, uh, did, like, impression texturing. But you can also probably buy patterns of texture already made, like snake texture, and then just go to town on this, or perhaps sculpt the texture yourself and then mold it but that looks good right there a little bit one right here that's even better than the other side that looks good this looks really good actually I'm I'm surprised at first I was like no this is not this ain't happening but it's totally working so I just did an area for you right here let me do the rest off camera for the sake of just trying to get this filmed in under 10 hours and then I will get back to you and we'll go to the next step we'll texture the face 
So the only thing left now is the face. We're going to try to do some kind of texturing on this. Straight away, I know that it's going to need a slice going into it to make the jaw, the mouth. All right, this is the largest stylus tool I have. So I'll just go like that and kind of waller it out. On the other side, I'm wallering it because I want it to be a little bigger than what the stylus tool is. Now I'll just take some cos clay and get me two equal amounts here. I'm just sticking them on there and touching it all the way around. Try not to touch it directly, you know, on top because that's just going to flatten it. I'm pushing it in there from the angles. Now we'll just take some tiny snakes like this. Cut that in half and we're going to go on the back side. That looks pretty cool. Now we're not really we're once again we're kind of just doing something creative here this ain't accurate and I'm pushing those snakes down towards the middle right here I'm blending that in those are kind of like guides we'll put some little clay right here on both sides like that okay I zoomed in a little bit more hopefully this this is a little bit better but I'm gonna take my tool and work this clay down like this so the back side of that second snake I worked towards its body and the front I'm blending it onto that snake that we used to rim the eye I'll use the stylus tool for this we're going to bring these patterns up onto that what we just sculpt I don't know how well this is going to turn out but it seems like it's going pretty well okay so now he's all textured up now could this be better absolutely but we're not gonna stress with how nice it is because we will never get finished if we kept doing that so now I'm just gonna take some of my Sculpey clay softener and right here on my marble make me a little puddle this is what I'll be working with and I'm gonna get this brush nice and wet and I'm just gonna go and alright that's causing discoloration on the clay like quite a bit but we're going to paint this so it really doesn't matter but I'm just working small little circles we're just working some of that texturing to where it's softer where they're not so deep and also it takes away the fingerprints and this is actually making it look really really good you kinda gotta experiment with it as far as how much you do it in what area basically when I dug down into this like right here the gouges are very deep where I went a little over zealous with that tool so I just take this in there and do my little circles and it just softens it all up and evens everything out after a while you'll start getting an idea of what something will look like after it's painted even looking at the bare texture you'll start getting an idea oh, okay I know what I got going on here but if you're say if you're new to this it'll be kinda of hard to see what's going on this is a hard color to see anyways I think gray would be better for sculpting because you can see what's going on with the texturing a lot easier as opposed to this beige and the, the new final product for the cosplay it's an even brighter color which that'll be even harder to see so I'm I'm thinking gray would be the best but I went with both colors the gray and the beige okay so let me get the rest of this done off camera and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bake this in the oven on this piece of marble at 200 actually I'm gonna bake this 300 degrees because I, I found this particular clay cures the strongest at 300 degrees now this is beta clay it's not the final product so I'll have to test it again even though the packaging might say 275 you just do a break test which I'll do this I'll do this I'll do a video on this here soon where if you take your cause clay and you bend it really really hard and it gives like a crisp rubbery snap sound almost like a pickle like a rubbery snap that is not the true strength of the clay it needs to be a little bit higher temp 
So when I baked some of this at 275, I found that I was I could just break it up into pieces and it made this crispy snap. When I when I baked it at two, uh, 300 degrees, when I tried to bake, when I tried to break it, it just turns white where it's under extreme stress. That's maximum strength. I'll show a video explaining that a little more later. But let me bake this. Uh, let me finish this up and then bake it, and then we'll go to painting it. So here's this little snake just before it goes into the oven. Isn't he cute? I figured you'd want to see it in all its glory before it becomes permanent. Although, I feel that there really is not much difference between the green and the cured version of this clay. It really does hold its detail very well. But anyways, here it is for you to see it. Okay, this thing has been baked and that's something you don't see every day. Also, um, if I were to hold this right here, like say right here, and slap it onto this, would polymer clay, that would most likely shatter, but here I want to show you something. Hold your ears. It's indestructible. <laughs> That's because this is rubber. Rubber doesn't shatter and rubber doesn't chip. So one thing I noticed is the posability is not that strong because the wire inside it was so weak and also it's all, it's thick. So those are some factors to consider. It's a, it's a new product, so we're gonna have to get used to it, but it's posable enough. Like you can see how much I'm doing this. It's really, really strong stuff. So what we're gonna do now at this stage is we're going to sand it, the bottom side of it with this 320 grit to clean it up a little bit. And I'm gonna be rubbing the body down with some steel wool. The reason I'm doing that is when you flex it, it causes the acrylic to come off. You need a rough surface for the acrylic to bond to. Um, I found acrylic paints do work very well for cause clay. It's just you need to have the surface to be somewhat abrasive. You look at the bottom side, it looks pretty good. Uh, there was this booger. If you rewind the video, you see me set it down on this booger. I already peeled it off, but I'm just gonna hold this flat like this and just drag it around a little bit. See how that changes the color of that? It's a little brighter than this around it. That's letting you know it's been sanded. And that's all. That's how you can also tell if you have low areas. I'm not really worried about low areas and stuff like that. I want to sand the bottom so the paint will stick to the bottom as well. That's the only reason why I'm doing it. See, now that's nice and good and sanded. That's also correcting the bottom a little bit to where it's not so rough. Let's see what I can do with this area right here. Now that's going to need a little more work than that. I'm probably going to lose some of my texturing if I go any deeper though. I need a rougher sandpaper. I am fresh out of 120 grit sandpaper, which is what I like to normally use for correcting surfaces. This is 80 grit. It's really, really rough. So it'll just make cleaning up the gouges that it makes kind of difficult. See, that's cutting way more aggressively. One way around this, to get this kind of scuffed up too, I'll use the steel wool on these low areas. But I'll continue to use this 180 to take out the high. Both these sides are high and it leaves like a low, it'll kind of correct it a little bit. See how that did? Just makes it a little flatter. See it's shallow in the middle. But this is okay, I'll use the steel wool to fix that. Now I'm gonna remove that roughness with this 220. This is 220. Okay, the reasoning behind the steel wool is I, I can't sand this these scales because it'll start dramatically changing how they look. They'll start flattening out and it'll just cause chaos. So it'll accept the shape of all this going on with this 
and it'll still provide the abrasiveness that I'm looking for. So let's just give it a shot. So anywhere you're going to have flexibility going on that's painted, you'll want to have some kind of roughed up surface. If you had any idea how rough I'm being with this small little delicate part, I mean, you would t immediately appreciate the how incredible cosplay is. It really is. I mean, look at this. Okay, I have my snake all sanded. He's done. Now I'll just go wash him, and then I'll clean my marble up, and then we'll get to doing some painting. Okay, I'm all set up here to paint. I have lemon, black, and bright red. These colors were all I had that were the closest to what I needed. Uh, I think they'll do the trick, pretty much. I use alcohol to clean my brush, and I got a nylon brush, paint tray, snake, wax paper protected my surface. And I was having a bit of a issue trying to figure out how to map this out. I thought at first that I could just cut pieces of tape and put them on here where all the black would be. But then I was like, hey, this is wax paper. I can just draw right on here, you know, segments. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just map this out using a mechanical pencil here. And I know the head starts black. It's all black and it has a yellow band. Uh, I would like to put the yellow band where his eyes are. That way his little beady black eyes will kind of stand out. Typically though, the, the black actually goes past the eye to where the eyes are black and the face around it's black. But it doesn't contrast well. I don't, I'm not sure if I want to do it that way or not. But from here to here, we'll say that this is black. We'll put a B in there. So a good little section afterwards would be the yellow with the red in the middle. Okay, I'm just eyeballing this, but I, I am going to keep a little roller here to at least keep an idea of what's going on. Like, I got two inches of black. We know the red will be at least two inches, but we want a little bit for the other color, which is yellow. The yellow is actually quite narrow, so let's do half inch increments for the two yellows. So we'll go one, two, three inches. So this big segment right here will be red with the yellows on either end of it and then we need another section of black it will be a little bit less than two inches this time so we'll go just a little bit like a sixteenth smaller we'll call this black and then once again we'll go with this I'm just eyeballing this I'm not really getting uh, real crazy with this we're back at black again and we're gonna go just a little bit less so this is going to be black. If you notice, the reds are all larger than the blacks. This is this is on purpose because there's going to be yellow bands sharing that space where the reds are. So we're looking good so far. So this is, I think this is going to be good enough for what we got going on here. Um, so now that I, I'm happy with this, I'm going to transfer these lines, these marks that I made, onto the snake. Okay, I'm not liking how these lines are transferring onto this using a uh, graphite pencil. So let me try a colored pencil. Much better. This is much, much better. This is a Prismacolor black. It really don't matter what it is as long as I can get these lines on here visually. So starting with black, let's get some painting done here. I'll tell you what, I wish everything covered like black does. That's like a one coat deal right there. It's very nice. I can tell you right now, this red, red area is much, much larger than, than these. So I'm gonna come back just a, even a little bit further than what my line, my guide says, just to kind of um, help correct that a little bit more. So now let's use some of this lemon yellow. And what I wanna do is just paint a band on both sides of the black. And I'm pretty much doing a little bit wider than a brush stroke. And this ain't gonna do one coat like the black did, unfortunately. So I have to be patient with this and just paint as many coats as I 
need for it to fully cover. Okay, I'm just looking at this red here, and I, I think it's just too... Looking at the images, it's more of a, it has a little bit of orange and some black in it. So to achieve orange, I'm going to just experiment with this little bit right here. I'm going to put like one drop of um, yellow or or a lot of yellow. Let's get some of that out of there. And just a pinch of black. I just put it on my brush. And we're going to mix these up and see what we get here. And I'm really liking this color that I just made. So we have a custom color here. Hopefully this covers really well and it doesn't backfire on me because I doubt I'll be able to produce this color again. All right, so let's get painting. We're gonna start over here by his little tail and get us a nice coat going. That red's even going down in there in the cracks very well, thankfully, because it's difficult to do it, especially when it's right beside another color and I can tell you right now that it covers really well, similar to the black. So we're in luck. If I have to do a little more touch up, I will. Definitely not filming doing the back side of this. It's pretty much the same thing. Same thing you're seeing on the front side. There you have it. This looks like a coral snake. The only thing left is to paint those eyes and the face black. Uh, I suppose I could do that really quick while this is drying. I'm going to paint the eyes black for you and then we're going to wrap this video up and call it finished. But now we're just going to paint a stripe on his face because looking at the internet they they all have this. Awesome. His eyes stand out. I don't know if it should but I just that's how I wanted to do it so that's how it's getting done. That pretty much sums up a nice little project that I got here. I think it looks pretty darn good. I don't know what you guys are going to think, but I'm always curious what you have to say. Uh, please drop this video a like and leave a comment. And, um, you know, it helps It helps the channel grow. And also, I like to hear from you anyways. So until the next project, I thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you all here again soon. Thank you so much for watching.